All right, here's another video on our new DLive C3500 console. Um, a really cool option that this uh, this console has is being able to load in different preamp presets. Um, so currently, we have uh, we have one bass signal. You know, we have one signal coming from the bass guitar, um, but we have two bass channels. So what we've done is we've patched the bass channel into a second um, fader. Um, that we're calling base two, base one and base two. So base one is the original, just single feed that we always get from the base. Base two is basically a copy of base one, just on a different channel. And we do some different settings for it. So on our base two channel, what's really cool is uh, we're able to load in different preamps. So if you go to, um, if you click select on your input channel um, and you go over to preamp, um, a lot of times what this will look like, let me reset this. It'll look like this. It's just kind of like a basic preamp that's on the console, and you can load in different settings. So over here on the left, there's a couple buttons. One says lib, one says setup, one says listen. The lib stands for library. Um, if you press that while you're on the preamp screen, um, it'll give you a preamp module library. Um, so right now there's no module. On here there's a tube stage and there's a dual stage valve. Um, they look a little bit different, so I'll show you real quick. The dual stage valve looks something like this. You do have to turn it on by flipping that switch to on. Um, and you've got a couple different settings that you can play with. I haven't gotten to go through all of these, um, but I've gotten to play with it a little bit, and it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, you can. it's got a high drive option, high frequency lift, you can turn that, do all kinds of stuff, play with harmonics. Um, it's pretty sweet. It's a lot of fun just kind of experimenting with this. Um, on a side note, if you want to experiment with something like this, never do it during service or during worship. Always do it um, during run-through. I'm sorry, not run-through. Always do it during rehearsal because we have a rehearsal, then we have a run-through, which is a mock service, and then we have service. So do this in rehearsal. Do this when you're building the mix. Um, do this if, if you can do it quickly. Um, do it whenever you're doing a mic check, you know set gain and then do some quick parameters if you feel comfortable doing that um, But most often you'll want to if you want to play with this when you're mixing you will want to do it during rehearsal um, When you actually have time um, to mix it um, I wouldn't spend too much time on it if uh, if you can't get it to where you're comfortable uh, Getting it fit in the mix Just play it safe and go without it um, And we can come in you know, on a training night and play with it if we need to or something like that with virtual sound check um, but yeah let's go to the tube stage so this one looks a little bit different again you do have to turn it on um, and then it's got a couple different options so any button you press um, you can pretty much click it and uh, use this big rotary knob to make changes here um, this is the one I've been kind of playing with a little bit more um, sometimes what I'll do on the base 2 channel is I'll put it on high drive and uh, adjust the drive adjustment, get it distorted a little bit, and kind of mix it in um, with the original bass channel. Um, and on this bass two, you know, I might do some EQ stuff to kind of get some of that distortion to pop out or get it cleaned up or uh, just to kind of get it sounding how you want it. So when you mix the two together, it really helps that bass uh, kind of punch out, kind of like what we watched in some of those MXU videos. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature. Um, one other thing I want to touch on really quick is the inserts. Um, so, for example, on vocals, um, we can actually have an insert um, send on here. And I'm actually going to unsign this and show you guys how to get into there. So, if you want to click, click select on a channel, and up here at the top, um, it's got a, duffel, a couple different menus, preamp, filter, gate. There's an insert A and there's an insert B. Um, if you use insert A, you just, it, they work the same way. Uh, you have a send and a return. So um, the send is currently unassigned, so you hit the drop down menu, and you can pick different um, ports of mix racks and consoles that you want to receive a signal from or send a signal to. Um, in this case, we don't have any like outboard gear or anything like that, so I'm just going to use a uh, an internal 
um, unit. You can use a rack effect, um, but I'm just going to use what they have here, the Dynamic 8. Um, and you see it automatically sets the return to Dynamic 8.6. Um, so yeah, we've got a multiband and a dynamic EQ. Multiband EQ and a dynamic band, a dynamic EQ. Um, and then you can select all your different frequencies to be in or out. Um, and yeah, this is basically a multiband compressor slash, um, I just had a brain fart, maximizer. Sure. Um, but anyways, you can select these and you can, you can make this rotary knob either be gain or frequency. So I can use this knob if I have it set to frequency to sweep or I can set it for gain. Set gain there. You can set a threshold for compression. You can change the width and uh, you can decide if you want the compressor to um, engage a signal above the threshold or below the threshold. So um, this works as a compressor or an expander, not a maximizer, an expander. So if you uh, have this selected uh, to engage for any signal above the threshold, it's going to compress any signal above the threshold. Uh, if you want it to expand, you want it to kick in for anything below the threshold. So anything that's coming in below the threshold um, will be expansion. So you can play with this. Um, I like to use it on vocals um, to kind of compress some of that higher, um, higher range frequencies um, that can kind of hurt your ears if somebody's talking, or to even clean up some of the muddiness in, in a speaker's voice. Um, you can use that. Um, and then you also have a high pass and a low pass. So yeah, just a quick little video there. Let me know if you guys have any questions.